Good afternoon. My topic is about emerging tax issues in the digital economy. For my research questions, first, what are the implications of digitalization for taxation? Second, what measures do different countries have indicated they would implement? Third, what is the framework for designing the tax regime as identified by different countries? Here's the outline of my presentation. Advances in information and communication technology brought about digital transformations, thus giving rise to digital economy. Digital economy is characterized by unparalleled reliance on intangibles, the massive use of data, and the widespread adoption of multi-sided business models. ICT improved business processes and promoted innovation in all sectors of the economy. New business models have emerged, thus altering the global business landscape. Trade in goods is being replaced by services, as digital information transferred over the internet takes the place of paper books, music CDs, and other tangible goods. The internet is displacing newspapers and magazines as the dominant advertising medium. Amid these developments, platform-based businesses which harness digital networks to facilitate transactions between other businesses and users are expanding rapidly in scale, scope, and influence. The pervasive nature of digitalization has brought about difficulty on the part of tax administrators to ring fence the digital economy from the rest of the economy for tax purposes. The rise of digital economy poses a big challenge to governments, that is to devise a taxation regime that generates revenue without reducing the benefits from digitalization. The objective of the study was to review the literature and navigate the tax issues and challenges in the digital economy, taking note of the issues and challenges that are relevant to the Philippines. For my research methodology, I did desk review of various OECD, EU, and UN documents, as well as literature review. Here is an overview of the digital economy. There is no consensus yet on the definition of digital economy. Here are some definitions that I found in the literature. Digital economy refers to the entirety of sectors that operate using internet protocol enabled communications and networks irrespective of industry. All economic activities using the internet as a platform and digital information and knowledge as key inputs for the process of producing, marketing, and distributing goods and services. IMF narrow definition of digital economy. Online platforms, and activities that owe their existence to such platforms. IMF broad definition, all activities that use digitized data, which arguably could refer to the entire economy. World Bank definition, digital economy refers to a new paradigm of accelerated economic development based on real-time data exchange the prominent role of online platforms and data in such an economy is noted. Book and Hicks define digital economy based on scopes of relevance. First, digital sector. That is the core of the digital economy, referring to the IT or ICT sector, producing foundational digital goods and services. Second, True digital economy that is part of economic output derives solely from digital technologies with a business model based on digital goods or services. It covers the digital sector and emerging digital and platform services. Third, digitalized economy that is the broad scope of the digital economy referring to the use of ICT in all economic fields. Here is the diagram that shows the three scopes based on Bokht and Hicks. It 
based on OMCAD 2017, digital economy refers to the application of internet-based digital technologies to production and trade of goods and services. The study mapped digital economy into two types of MNEs, digital MNEs, purely digital players that operate entirely in a digital environment and mix players. ICT MNEs provides enabling infra that makes the internet accessible to individuals and businesses. Here's the architecture of the digital economy based on ONTAD 2017. The complex and multifaceted nature of digital economy brought about issues and challenges in taxation in digital economy. The lack of a generally agreed definition of the digital economy or digital sector and the lack of industry and product classification for internet platforms and associated services are hurdles to measuring the digital economy. Improved measurement of digital products and transactions could improve measurement of inflation, BOP developments affecting external sector stability, and financial stocks, and flows of relevance for countering money laundering and tax evasion. It should be noted here that reaching a common definition and measurement of the size of the economy is critical in devising a tax regime for the digital economy. The disruptions in traditional sectors that is due to new business models created by digital technologies and tools. The first model that is based on substitution of existing products or services enabled by digitalization or product or service substitution. For example, music cassettes and compact discs being displaced by streamed music online, among others. Second model that is involving digital services that bypass traditional channels and reduce cost for end users or bypass, for example, online purchase of insurance or online purchase of airline tickets or customized tickets. Third, new digitally enabled business model or technological paradigm shift for example, cloud computing, that is a fundamental change in how consumers procure, access, and use IT infra while offering lower cost and rapid scalability. For example, businesses subscribe to cloud services such as Alibaba Cloud, Google Cloud, and so on, instead of procuring and maintaining their own service, thus providing firms flexibility of adjusting their subscription based on needs and also the benefits from some features such as protection against hackers and cyber attacks. Major policy challenges with respect to direct taxation. Nexus, the continual increase in potential of digital technology and reduced need in many cases for extensive physical presence in order to carry on business combined with increasing role of network effects generated by customer interactions can raise questions as to whether the current rules to determine nexus with a jurisdiction for tax purposes are appropriate. Second, data. Growth in sophistication of information technology has permitted companies in digital economy to gather and use information across borders to an unprecedented degree raises issues of how to attribute value created from generation of data through digital products and services and of how to characterize for tax purposes a person or entity's supply of data in a transaction. Characterization The development of digital products or means of delivering services creates uncertainties in relation to the proper characterization of payments made in the context of new business models, particularly in relation to cloud computing. The policy challenges raise questions relating to 
whether the current international tax framework is still appropriate or relevant in dealing with changes that the digital economy brings and business models it creates. Allocation of taxing rights between source and residents jurisdictions, paradigm used in determining where economic activities are carried out and value is created for tax purposes. Global non-taxation that may arise from lack of nexus in market country under current rules and also lack of taxation in the jurisdiction of the income recipient and of the ultimate parent company. Issues relating to base erosion and profit shifting, or BEPS. Challenges with respect to corporate income tax. Characterization of payments may trigger taxation in the jurisdiction where the payer is resident or established and hence overlap with the issue of nexus. Collection of data from users located in a jurisdiction may trigger questions regarding whether it should give rise to nexus with that jurisdiction, and if so, whether and how the income generated from the use of this data should be attributed to that nexus. Also raises questions regarding how income from transactions involving data should be characterized for tax purposes. Challenges with respect to VAT systems. These challenges arise when goods, services, and tangibles are purchased from suppliers abroad in the absence of an effective international framework to ensure VAT collection in the jurisdictions of consumption. For economic actors such as SMEs, the absence of an international standard for charging collecting and remitting tax to a potentially large number of tax authorities creates difficulties and high compliance costs. From government viewpoint, there is a risk of loss of revenue and trade distortion, as well as the challenge of managing tax liabilities generated by a high volume of low-value transactions, which can create a significant administrative burden but marginal revenues. Simply put by Evans et al., these emerging tax issues can be summarized into three. First, how to tax a multinational business and other businesses on sales into a territory where it has little or no physical presence. Second, how to assign a value to user-generated data and content and then tax that value. Third, how to compensate for the possible reduction in labor tax revenues due to the automation of routine tasks. The huge challenge is the taxation of the intangibles, that is digital and cross-border flow of goods and services. It should be noted that the current international tax framework was originally designed for brick and mortar economy. Brick and mortar businesses refer to companies with physical presence or permanent establishment that is used to assign tax jurisdiction. New business models do not require physical presence, thus they easily cut across borders. The rise in digital economy unveiled opportunities for tax avoidance. The heavy reliance on digital technology, borderless economy, and outdated tax rules enables business models to escape taxation in jurisdictions where they do business and shift profits to low-tax countries, otherwise known as tax haven. The taxation of digital transactions in cross-border contexts presents challenges to concepts of right to tax and allocation of profits between countries. The weaknesses in current rules create opportunities for base erosion and profit shifting. BEPS refers to tax planning strategies used by MNEs that exploit gaps and mismatches in tax rules to avoid paying tax. International organizations such as OECD, EU, and UN have endeavored to define challenges and come up with an international consensus on the best strategy. A 
addressing BEPS is a key priority. In 2013, OECD and G20 countries adopted a 15-point action plan to address BEPS. The action plan was envisioned to ensure that profits are taxed where economic activities generating the profits are performed and where value is created. In 2015, OECD released the final report that contains the BEPS issues and broader tax challenges, BEPS raises, as well as some recommendations. In 2018, the OECD released an interim report that provides an in-depth analysis of the main features of highly digitalized business models and value creation as well as potential implications for the existing international tax framework. In 2020, OECD G20 Inclusive Framework on BEPS issued a statement on the two-pillar approach to address the tax challenges arising from the digitalization of the economy. On Pillar 1, the Inclusive Framework endorses the unified approach that aims to address the issue on nexus and profit allocation. On Pillar 2, it's still work in progress. It's meant to ensure minimum level of taxation. To date, there is no consensus yet on the best strategy to address tax issues and challenges. Members of Inclusive Framework on BEPS affirm their commitment to reach an agreement on a consensus-based solution by the end of 2020. However, due to the pandemic, it was postponed. IF agreed upon an outline of the architecture of a unified approach on Pillar 1 as basis for negotiations and welcomed progress made on Pillar 2. Nevertheless, efforts by international bodies do not preclude individual countries from unilaterally proposing their own solutions. In the case of the Philippines, the BIR issued Revenue Memo Circular 55-2013. It says, existing tax laws and revenue issuances on the tax treatment of purchases and sale of goods or services shall be equally applied with no distinction on whether or not the marketing channel is the internet or digital media or the typical and customary physical medium. That is, taxation rules and guidelines on non-online transactions are applicable to online transactions. In addition, the BIR issued Revenue Memo Circular 60-2020 that is a notice for all persons engaged in business and earning income, particularly those who are into digital transactions to register their businesses. It covers all partner sellers, merchants, as well as other stakeholders. There are also proposed bills. One is by Congressman Wes Gachalian. The proposed bill is HB 6122. It is an act protecting consumers and merchants engaged in internet transactions, creating for this purpose the e-commerce bureau and appropriating funds therefore. It proposes the creation of the e-commerce bureau, the registration of online businesses, enterprises, and exemption from business tax in the first two years of operation. Another proposed bill is by Congressman Joey Salceda, that is House Bill 6765. The proposal will effect changes to the way the digital economy is currently taxed to better capture value created into the tax system. To conclude my presentation, I would like to highlight four points. First, the issues and challenges in taxation in digital economy stem from its complex and multifaceted nature. Second, 
reaching a common understanding and measurement of size and impact of digital economy is critical in devising a tax regime for digital economy. Third, Philippines identified scoping and measurement of digital economy as one of the barriers and challenges to implementing structural reforms relating to digital economy. The lack of official industry data that will measure contribution of digital trade to economies overall economic growth. There is no single standard definition of digital trade and technical innovations and new business models do not exactly fit with traditional sectoral classifications. PSA has started efforts in August 2018 to measure contribution of digital economy to GDP. However, according to this study by Liarina, Polistico, and Pascasio, the satellite accounts are not yet formulated and still, there is lack of statistics that explicitly measure digital economy. The study pointed out the lack of international definition and statistical framework as well as international guidelines with respect to measurement of digital economy. On digital infra gap, problems concerning internet availability, for example, 74% of secondary schools lack internet access. Affordability, the prices of ICT services are among the highest in ASEAN. Reliability or equality of digital infra, that is slow INET speed or slow internet speed, that is lowest among economies in Asia Pacific. Based on UNCTAD 2019, digital infrastructure still lacks a universally accepted definition. The levels of digital infrastructure can be categorized into four. First, ICT networks. Second, data infra. Third, digital platforms. Fourth, digital devices and applications. It should be noted that electricity infra is critical in enabling the use of digital infra. The opportunities and challenges that digital economy brings are particularly important for developing countries, including the Philippines. It is deemed critical for the Philippine government to eliminate the barriers and challenges and address the identified policy gaps to fully reap the benefits from the digital economy. The need for development strategies for the digital economy cannot be overemphasized. The focus of development strategies should be developing domestic digital capacities, that is closing the gap in digital infra which necessitates estimation of investment requirements. And with that, I finish my presentation.